<laughs> Guys in the Gulf. I see we've dropped off the ratings, mate. We're down to like spot 16 or something like that in our category on Spotify. What? Yeah, we're in the top 10 for weeks. So, yeah. I don't know if that means everyone else is getting better or we're getting worse. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, it's still Put going your pretty good. Put finger out, guys. Yeah, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Share us with your friends. Yeah, what are we now? Episode uh, 21, mate. I think this will be 21. Ooh, well, have we got any beers or what? Well, it's a, a, a rare morning podcast. Usually, well, the only other time we've done a morning one was after a, a very late night with mullet. And uh, <laughs> the, again, and the next morning we were feeling a little bit secondhand, but uh, feel quite refreshed today, mate. Mm. Although we did run into mullet yesterday, or yeah. he, he ran into us. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> literally. <laughs> oh, a few, uh, few boat repairs needed, but he's uh, <laughs> a wall operator. He is so. so with his brand new, uh, brand new engine, mate. Yeah, yeah. Well, we got footage of that. The um, yeah, you rocked up at your house and uh, Ash, you got. What do you say? Oh, you got a hammer and you got a this and you got a that. All the tools. Yeah, mate. Oh, any chance you could help us slip this new 150 on? <laughs> oh, I don't know. If we, did we talk about that last week? I don't know. I don't think so. I know you put a um, put a video up or That's a short a little, up. A little yeah, short yeah. one, yeah. <laughs> Bloody mullet. Well, he's well and truly got it running now, mate. He was flying around the flats yesterday. Uh, they're uh, dredging some, uh, some mud. <laughs> yeah, so. full rooster tail, yeah. Yeah. So... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so no, I was good to bump into him. We all bumped in, into Young Boy as well. So um, yeah, we actually uh, we went out for a run yesterday. Took um, uh, Andy for a run. Yeah, so Andy Total Carnage, who we had on the podcast a few episodes back. He's we actually talked him into coming down for a visit. The big trip down, a thousand k's from Darwin, and he arrived uh, two days ago. And um, yeah, so so we're we're going to be doing a bit of fishing with him. Yesterday we took him out on the water. He took out his red rocket. Ash and I jumped in the the new polycraft, and yeah, we just we did pretty much every river and creek we could think of. From we did the the big lap, yeah, the big lap. So out the out the crooked, yeah. over across to um, like the twin sort of area, up over there, showed Andy that spot, and then um, went back across the bay, back in through oh what we refer to as the dugongs, but like dugong four or something, and uh, yeah, the long way, the long shortcut. Yeah. It was a bit windy. It's um, so yeah. Took the long shortcut through the rivers and then back back into the Macarthur, out the Macarthur, and back into the Kellys, then back through the Kellys to the Carrington, and then back up the Carrington. So pretty much, Andy got to see pretty much all the major rivers yesterday. Yeah, so the Macarthur, the Crooked, and the Carrington. Yeah, uh, got to see the mouth of uh, all three of them pretty much. So yeah, yeah, so he did a few miles, but the yeah, I think it was worthwhile. I think he, there's a, a lot of good looking spots he, he liked the look of. We did have a flick around at a few spots. Um, we are right in the middle of a cold snap, so his uh, timing of this trip is is not ideal because those um, barra can you know shut down as they say for when the weather cools down. Yeah, so it's but, yeah, it's quite down just a, just a fraction, but um, obviously the yeah big winds. It's been blowing 25, 30 knots yeah. all night um, out at Centre Island, and the morning temps down here like the feels like temp was you know almost a single single digits. Um, yeah, yesterday morning and the yeah. morning before, so. Yeah, we were both wearing hoodies going down the river. Yeah, until nearly lunchtime. Yeah. <laughs> Which if you're from down south, you'd be laughing because it's, yeah, not cold at all really. But, um, but yeah, it definitely feels cold when, you, when you're yeah. cruising down the river. So, yeah. um, but the barra is still there though. Like yeah, yeah. There, and they just need a bit more encur- encouragement. Yeah, yeah, you need to just work to a little bit harder. Yeah. yeah, you need a good net man as well. Yeah, yeah, Mike is a bit slower than that. <laughs> uh, we had a, had a good one on there for... Uh, for a minute, but uh, oh, yeah, for about Mike, two seconds, Mike, Mike is a bit slow, slow on the net. <laughs> no, uh, yeah, we peppered that one snag there for a bit. Look, looked pretty good on the corner there, and um, pulled one small bar out of there. Probably only thirty odd centimeters, though. One rat, and then uh, kept mucking around, mucking around, and then um, yeah, missed a, a real good fish. Um, yeah, buffed the lure underwater, and um, so uh, next cast, cast back in there again, and then bang, hooked it. But um, yeah, it went straight back into the snag and um, and pulled the pulled the trebles, unfortunately, but. Um, but yeah, other than that, we um, yeah got to show Andy around anyway. Uh, all the shallow spots where not to get stuck, because <laughs> that's the other thing I suppose as well is that even though the tides aren't really small at the moment, because uh, it's nearly full moon, but um, given the wind, it holds the tide out here. Because for those that don't know, like the Gulf has very strange tides compared to anywhere else, um, and so even though we've got like a like a two meter high tide. With the big strong southeasties blowing, it'll literally hold the water out, and the water won't come in for sometimes several days. So instead of having a two meter high tide, it might be only equivalent to 
a 1.2 or 1.4 meter tide. So, and that's um, exaggerated even more as you come up the river, like to the boat ramp, even oh. getting into the boat ramp was a bit difficult, um, you know, uh, with, you know, bigger boats, it's near impossible yeah, when well, it's like this. The water height uh, yesterday or the day before even as well virtually didn't change all day at, at the boat ramp. Yeah, yeah, it might have been two or 300 mil difference all yeah. day. So um, whereas normally it's a lot more than that. So, but yeah, so anyway, that's all right, mate. Um, got a few jobs done, got um, all the river markers back in now. So yeah, and, um, yeah put them back in uh, the right spots after the uh, wet season, after the big flood. Yeah, so a lot of the time I recommend people that when they're going out, I said, don't ignore the river markers, but sort of don't trust them. But be but careful, for, yeah. For right now, you can trust them. Yeah, yeah, they're all back where they're supposed to be at the moment. But um, yep. but obviously, yeah, well, during the flood, they can they can move and yeah. um, and several of them had. So um, they're mostly back in the right spot now and not everything's marked as well, you know, like it's the main main rock bars that the right at the front of the club and in the Carrington that's marked pretty well. Yeah, that's it really, yeah. But other than that, like you've still got to be careful of like, the turn off and stuff where you, you guys hit the sand there the other day, like that's really shallow there. Yeah, well, we pulled up on the way home yesterday and it was very low there and had a look and it's like, wow, like that's, yeah, it's only a few inches deep, just yeah. a, only a few metres off the channel, yeah. Yeah, so you got to be, so got to be really, really uh, vigilant when you're travelling around, especially if you don't know the know the area very well. But yeah, what else have we been up to, mate? Um, well, news around camp, the Jenny Flats is now open. Yeah, yeah, we'll talk about sand. Um, yeah. <laughs> Jenny Flats has had uh, several thousand tonnes of sand um, cleaned up off there now. Um, wow. Um, Peter Smith's brought his uh, machine up from down south, his um, uh, posse track, and uh, he's done, yeah, a few weeks of work, voluntary, around the club. So, um, yeah, big thanks to Peter for getting all that stuff. Like he's fixed all the roads up around camp and yeah, put heaps awesome, of gravel awesome. in and, yeah, done an excellent job and, yeah, Spent, I don't know, the best part of 10 days or so down at Jenny Flats cleaning up the first half of it with his machine. And then um, we were able to get the dozer in for a few days as well. So we got the D6 in and pushed a lot of that sand um, up so it's out of the out of the road. So uh, we can hopefully have it, yeah, the rest of Jenny Flats open in the not too distant future. Yeah, awesome. So Jenny Flats, that's our non-powered area at King Ash Bay. So usually it's well and truly open in sort of by May. Like yeah, most we, years. Usually April, I reckon. Yeah. Um, usually we plan for the 1st of April opening, um, depending on what the wet seasons are doing. If it's a late wet season, then obviously, you know, it, it gets postponed a little bit. But because of the, the flood this year and the type of flood, the amount of sand that, and silt that got dropped, like, it was quite literally thousands of tonnes. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, man. Several thousand tonne of sand put on the... Uh, on the ground down there. So that all had to be cleaned up because you just couldn't drive around in the, you know, even in a Toyota and four wheel drive, it was hard, hard work driving around. So you're not going to drive a, you know, caravan, back a caravan into a side or anything like that. Yep. So to give you a bit of a, a visual of it, like the, the tap stands are normally, you know, sort of um, 900 mil, a meter out of the ground. Some of them are only just sticking out of the ground, oh. you know, with all the sand there. So, uh, and then yeah, sections of the bank that have been, um, been washed away as well so um yeah we had to make it safe before we get people down there and the last thing we wanted someone to back the caravan up to the bank and then uh, have the bank give way so yeah yeah the guys have pushed up a lot of the sand and made sort of a bit of a ridge around along the bank there to um to try and make it a bit safe so people don't get too close so yeah that's good though um club's getting fairly busy mate i mean tuesday night we was standing room only down the club yeah well it's the busiest tuesday of the year so far yeah mm, yeah by far mate no, there was a few hundred people there i yeah. reckon and um, yeah, that no, was a pretty good night though. Heaps of raffles and, and stuff as normal. Um, oh, who else do we have there? Um, oh, uh, the new fisheries team. Fisheries that, compliance unit, I yeah, think they're called. Yeah. So um, so basically they're a new new government department. So years and years and years ago, they used to have um, fisheries, which was um, a, its own section of, of government, fisheries compliance. And um, and that'd be similar to like Queensland or, or you know other other states where they have a um, a fisheries compliance team. The Northern Territory hasn't had that for thirty plus years, <clears throat> maybe longer, for maybe forty years. Um, and it's all it's all just been put on sort of water police to deal with all the fisheries compliance. Uh, now they've actually got a um, an independent um, you know well, new government team that um, that look at um, yeah fisheries compliance and you know the guys came down and um, you know basically pulled up at the boat ramp and you know pulled people up and just had a chat you know like like the guy said they're not here to throw the book at people and yeah. you know they're not not to here to uh, try and catch people out or anything like that they're here to um more or less give information and you know try and um build a relationship with rec fish shows and and clubs and things you know people yeah. like ourselves so that um and even the fact that 95 percent of people do the right thing 
Yeah, yeah. And, and yeah, so least, yeah. yeah, so basically we like the good, the people doing the right thing can be the eyes and ears for the, basically if someone's doing the wrong thing, dob them in. Yeah, that, simple as that. That's the idea, mate. And and then that's the whole point it's of the, the one case where now. snitches don't get stitches. <laughs> if someone's if someone's out there doing the wrong thing, they want to know about it. Yeah, and, which is and they and they they're, they're working on having a uh, like a rapid response team. So if you you know if you're out here and you you're fishing and you see somebody doing something that you you know is not right, um, you know you can pass that information on, and them guys can get down here straight away and uh, and deal with it. And you know we don't want them sort of people here anyway that are you know yeah doing the wrong we're thing. We're talking about things like uh, if someone's filling up eskies full of barra, like an undersized fish. Um, someone might have a bloody drag net or something which you're not allowed to use here. Um, yeah, things like things like that. Just yeah, things you'll like, 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 yeah. This is this is yeah. This is not right. <laughs> yeah, so they, them guys are doing doing a pretty good job. Eh? They um they came down with the Sea Rangers and a few others, and yeah yeah had a chat to people. They came down on Tuesday night and um, gave us a heap of uh, literature to to um, hand around and um yeah just inform people of you know these are the rules and regulations. This is what um, what's expected of people when they're fishing here, and the idea is to make the you know fishing sustainable for for generations to come. You know we we enjoy uh, how good the fishing is here, and uh, we want to keep it that way. So. So uh, those guys are here to uh, to help with that. Yeah. So, well, short yeah. y- short yarn with with regards to this. Um, one of the fellas that came out, he has emailed me before. It was uh, if you've seen my video, um, I called it giant cyclone prawns. Yeah. Um, it turns out two of the pots that I used in that video are non-compliant. I've got rid of them out, them now. At the time, I didn't know, um, and then someone brought it to my attention that the two of the pots was they didn't have the turtle rings in them. Turtle exclusion rings, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because basically a turtle could get into your pot and drown basically. So, yeah, so two of the pots were, yeah, non-compliant. And then, yeah, a, a follower let me know that. I'm like, oh, whoops. And I thought, oh, do I take the video down or do I, like the damage is done now? Like, so I've left the video up and I thought I'll just wear the consequences. And then not three days later, I get an email from like Northern Territory Fisheries, Fisheries Compliance Unit. I'm like, oh, no, I'm going to jail. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, nah, but he just wanted to have a chat about, yeah, possible, uh, yeah, me, yeah. Uh, but doing a bit of a collab sort of thing, sort of uh, becoming involved in yeah what they do basically. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, educating and yeah, exactly. So it wasn't anything. Although he, I, did, I actually spoke to him about it. That the exact story I just told you, I told him that yesterday when we saw him, and and he, he sort of the, the way he was nodding at me, and mm-hmm, he's like, I know, I saw it. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah, but I figured it's probably more valuable being up and talking about it now, yeah, than, yeah. than just taking the video down and pretending it didn't happen. Yeah. So yeah. So make sure you even I've been yeah fishing and crabbing and all that sort of stuff here for yeah over ten years and yeah I still, I, something, I, something I still had a little a little slip up you know yeah, yeah. so just, yeah you always got to be always learning always making sure you're trying to abide by the rules yeah yeah no it was good to have them guys come down anyway mate so um, oh what else have we been up to mate I've uh, been uh, getting into the houseboat doing some repairs on it getting yeah it ready mate to you're overdue usually you'd have it in the water for. a... Oh, oh, if there was no cyclone, but you'd try and get it in around April, May, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's yeah. So, hopefully, yeah, had yeah. a few little repairs to do, which we had uh, Antoine, Anthony. Yeah, yeah. yeah Ant came down and give us a hand. He uh, comes here for has a weekend off. <laughs> <laughs> Gets put to work straight away. He did so. Yeah, so he was uh, under the boat there, uh, scraping the hull and. Uh, yeah, getting it getting it all uh, prepared so we can uh, put some anti fowl on her and put her back in the water soon. Hopefully, mate. Um, hopefully, we get some big enough tides we can actually get it in. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we'll see what happens there. But that'll be good. Um, good to have it back in the water so we can uh, yeah have a bit of a base down there, mate, and uh, hopefully do some trips uh, when the weather uh, picks up a bit and um, yeah get some calm days. Hopefully, get out around the islands and have a look. But uh, yeah, so we're uh, looking forward to getting that done. Um, what else we doing? You were telling me just before you got here, you you were just on uh, on socials and you saw Affant had some news, didn't they? Oh yeah, so um, yeah, okay. Obviously, anti election this year, um, uh, without being political, but yeah, the anti election coming up in August, and um, Affant's put out a bit of a um, bit of a spiel about what they sort of are expecting from um, from you know the uh, you know the major parties, you know, or whoever's going to be in government um, after August, and. So uh, yeah, from uh, Warren Dewitt, who's the um, Afant president. So and Afant again is Amateur Fishermen's Association of the Northern Territory, which they're a very big organisation. Um, you know, has quite a bit of pull when it comes to um, you know political, uh, you know things political in regards to fishing. So um, 
Uh, but yeah, Warren's basically said it's essential that parties uh, contending to lead the territory from August 2024 fully appreciate that great fishing is far from guaranteed. Instead, it requires leaders to make and then to deliver on commitments over a range of key policy areas. So, um, you know, there's, you know, the recreational fishing industry in the Northern Territory is about $270 million worth. And, um, you know, in uh, after surveys conducted um, last year and the year before, I think there's about... 60,000 people that go fishing quite regularly in the territory that live here. So, you know, it's over 30% of, of yeah. um, Territorians enjoy fishing and there's um, <clears throat> over 2,500 people employed directly in recreational fishing. So, you know, it's a very important thing to look after and it's a big, obviously, massive draw card for, for tourism. Yep. It is one of the biggest things that people come here for, you know. Uh, so, yeah, it's just a bit of a thing to say, look, whoever's, whoever wins the election, we need to make sure we get some some things right. You know, I mean, there's been a lot of talk about gill nets and, you know, commercial barra fishing and things like that. And whatever policies um, governments come up with, they need to get it right. And, um, you know, to ensure a, a safe and, um, you know, economically viable uh, recreational fishing sector. So, so yeah, so it'll be interesting to see what happens, mate, come August. Um, yeah, it's been a, a lot happening in politics lately, but we're not really a political... We try, uh, try not to be anyway. Try, try not to be, but... Uh, as long as you're not a Greens voter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, Cancelled. <laughs> so, uh, so, yeah, so anyway, but, um, but yeah, it'd be interesting to see what happens, mate. It'd be, you know, it's always interesting to see what people come up with this time, uh, you know, of, of the election cycle. So, you know, we are coming up only a couple of months away from the territory election. It'd be very interesting to see what happens, uh, yeah, when it... Um, when it uh, comes around, see yep. what see what policies come, uh, the uh, different parties come up with. Yeah, because we can here down in the Gulf at King Ash Bay, we can be very affected by that. If if oh, uh, 100 percent, mate. One little rule change could like yeah change what how we operate here very very much so. Well, yeah. it's it's and it's not just that. It's, it's about um, putting funding in for for wreck fishing as well. So yep. in terms of infrastructure, like the boat ramp now at the moment, you know. Um, you know, I work pretty closely with Dipple um, in Catherine and, and them guys do a really good job. They they really try and get things sorted for us as soon as they can. You know, they're trying to get the boat ramp sorted for us now, but, you know, um, if there's more money allocated to these sorts of things, it's a lot easier to get jobs done quicker. So, you know, rather than having to wait months and months to get things, you know, fully completed, they can get done straight away, hopefully. Yeah. So, you know, especially at King Ash Bay at the moment, it's quite difficult to get if you've got a really big boat. You've got to you've got to nail the tides right to get the boats in and out. Yeah, um, for sure. With the, you know, with the big winds at the moment, but um, but hopefully we'll have that sorted in the coming weeks anyway. Yeah. So um, other than that, yeah, like there's other things as well. Obviously, um, in terms of like land access and things like that. So yeah. you know, government. which is a very very tricky subject as well. So oh, they, for sure. They, that's so getting it right the first time because that sets the precedent for everything. You know. Oh, for sure, mate. For sure, and that yep. you know that's the thing, and it's it's got to be. Um, like I said, economically viable for everyone involved, you know, there can't be any losers in, in it, you know. Um, so, yeah, but anyway, we'll see what happens come, uh, come August, mate. It'll yeah. be interesting to see. And, uh, yeah, hopefully uh, it all works out and, yeah, we've got a, a good government that really supports wreck fishing. Yep. All right, well, let's, let's talk fishing. Let's, yep. let's move on from that and let's talk some fishing. I'll do a quick one from um, Sanger, a fellow that, you, that a lot of people here would know. He, he's uh, been... Oh, this is probably a week ago now, but he's beating his chest around camp. He he got a, a ninety-two centimeter barramundi land-based here at King Ash Bay. He's uh, he's uh, given me permission to use the photo and a little video. So yeah, so what? Ninety-two centimeters. Ninety-two, mate. I reckon you're fake See? on the brag, mate. It was no, it was, it was no bigger than sixty-eight. Nah, ninety. That big. Approximately. <laughs> My arms aren't long enough. Well, measure that as nine and two. Perfect. Measure it. Please, just hand me. Yeah. Um, he's a bit of a character, and yeah, it's his PB barra, land based. Mm -hmm. you, oh, you're not wasting your time fishing land based here, but um, it's uh, it's not as productive. Like, we, obviously, if you can bring a boat here, bring a boat or hire a boat. Um, but you, every every year you hear of a few good fish being caught off the bank, and this For is sure. this is one. I know my dad caught a big uh, when they used to camp on Jenny Flats years ago. I think he got like a ninety eight or something like that yep. off the bank here. Um, and yeah, Sanger, who was actually flicking soft plastics off one little spot on the bank, and uh, yeah, bloody <laughs> ninety two. Uh, was it ninety two centimeter barra come along? Yeah, yeah, unreal. 
So that's a, a very good story. Well, you got to be in it to win it, mate. Absolutely, and, yeah. and, and, you know, Sanger comes here, he works at the mine, he comes here for, for his two weeks off yep. every, every month and um, he, uh, yeah, puts in the hours and puts in the work and, yeah, walks up and down the bank with his uh, rod and reel and, you know, has a few casts here, a few casts there and he, he does find the odd spot and he gets a couple yeah. of fish. Uh, a lot, lot of catfish and queenies and stuff like that. Yeah. But, um, but, yeah, he was very excited to go. When I saw him the other day up at the pub, mate. And by the way, if you, if you just saw that the image of him, that is his actual haircut. <laughs> <laughs> that's That wasn't a dare. Yeah, that's, yeah. Uh, that's how he wears it. <laughs> All right. Well, speaking of haircuts, well, let's stay on fishing and let's move on to um, we did a little trip up uh, to a spot with Ant. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Speaking of haircuts. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah Ant. Get a haircut. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah hippie. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, uh, yeah, we put the polycraft in because Ant, Ant did that work for us um, over at home there and give us a hand, and, as he always does when he's here. He always helps out and does heaps of stuff for heaps of people. So um, yeah. said to him, oh, look, let's uh, chuck a couple of beers in the boat and uh, chuck a few more hours in this polycraft so we can give it its first service. And uh, we'll go for a look somewhere. Well, we were going to go to some coastal creeks and then um, it was just too shallow because, yeah, as we met, mentioned, big winds. Tide hadn't come in enough, so um, ended up picking another um, river to go up or, um, or creek to go up, which I'd been up and I've worked up there and I've fished up there um, plenty of times, but I haven't been very far up it. So it's like, and it's a it's a long one. Yeah. So um, well, I've never, all three of us we got to we got up there and we're like all three of us. Oh, I've never been here. Never been that far I, up. I've yeah. been fishing here for over ten years. Ash has been here twenty plus years, like, and we've never been up there. It's amazing. Yeah, so we went for, well, well, let's just go for an explore. You know, we yep. didn't get to where we wanted to go, so let's just go find something different. And, and um, yeah, we ended up cruising for miles and miles and miles up the creek yep. and um, pretty much went as far as we could get that day with that tide. Um, yeah, slowed down pretty quick because a big rock bar goes the whole way across the river, which I didn't know was there. Yeah. And um, You sensed it, though. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I, I, you could see that, like, just, yeah, looking at the water just didn't really look right. Because yeah. um, I was sitting, I was stuck up the front and I'm facing back, so I, I can't, I'm no use. Um, and then Ash just, like, quickly starts slowing down. And then I'm like, what's going on? And then, doo, doo. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. Was, yeah, you just saw him in time. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, you just see the, the, I oh, know, you can sort of tell, like, looking at the bank, the bank looked a bit different. It's a lot shallower. Um, yeah, just the the way the water was moving, the surface of the water was moving. It looked like, yeah, looked like there was, you know, either sand or rocks or something. They looked shallow anyway. So, yeah, it come off the. I just started trimming up and then come off the plane just as, um, just we slowed right down. Yeah, just just touched the bottom and um, as we got a bit closer, then yeah, worked out. You know, just past that was a big rock by the way, en the whole en way. Enormous, the yeah. Yeah, and big big rocks too, like um, yep. not just flat rock, but like big boulders and stuff. Yeah. So, we actually. Um, Drifted around um, that rock bar and had a fish there yeah, for a little bit. Just dragged a few cod out of there. Yeah, yeah. It would, that's at right. certain tides and times, it would have to be a good jack oh, and barra spot. It for would, sure, it would be very good. Yeah. For sure, especially um, yeah, especially with it when it's cool. I reckon them rocks would keep warm, and oh. I reckon the barras would, would hang around there for sure. So um, we'll keep that one up the sleeve for yep. a, for a cold day, mate, and uh, go and have another look. But yeah, yeah, that looks like a good spot up there. Yeah. And then yeah, we sort of pretty much poked around there. The tide was still ripping out, so uh, we slowly headed back down the river and then looked for yeah, good spot to have a have a fish. And ended up oh, well, it was getting pretty close to dark, so because um, yeah. we, we didn't even leave here until about two o'clock in the afternoon. So um, <laughs> as usual, so um, yeah, found it, found one good corner there, and um, Ant pulled a nice jack out of there. Yeah. So um, I've got a photo of that. Yeah, yeah. So um, pulled a real nice jack out of there. So um, we had him for dinner, actually. Yeah. Well, you didn't, but yeah, no invite for me. That's all right. <laughs> me and Aunt did. <laughs> it was good too. Real good, fresh, fresh mangrove jack. So, um, so yeah, no, that was good, mate. Came back down and uh, came back up just on dark and uh, absolutely froze because none of us took a jumper. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mate, it was cold. Yeah, yeah, far out. Even with the um, the uh, hard solos in the in the <laughs> northern tins, mate, it was still bloody. <laughs> Still bloody freezing. Yeah. So, yeah heading uh, back up the river just as after the sun had set. Yeah, it's still, so we could still had light from the end, like the, the last light. But yeah, as soon as that sun went down, wow, got cold head up, heading up the river. Yeah. Yeah, so um, 
Speaking of cold, mate, I'll tell you one thing um, that's coming up is uh, one of the coldest places I've ever been to in my life, uh, other than Toowoomba. Um, <laughs> Switzerland. <laughs> no, it's colder than Switzerland, mate. <laughs> they call it a lazy wind. It goes straight through you, not around you. Is um, Brennett Downs. Races are coming up soon. Oh, yeah, rightio. So, I've um, never been. Yeah, no, it's a bloody great event. I think I was there for, I think it was the 100th anniversary, I think. Yep. Um, which was huge. Like, yeah. It was massive. Like, yeah, out in the middle of nowhere. Um, you know. So Bruno Downs is down between uh, uh, Heartbreak Hotel at Cape Crawford and Barclay Homestead. Yeah, at the Barclay so Homestead. So on, on the, ta- the Tablelands Highway. Yeah. So if you're coming from King Ash Bay, you'd, you'd turn at um, Heartbreak. Heart- and, yeah. Or if you're coming from Queensland, you'd, you'd turn off as if you're coming to King Ash Bay. Yeah. So you drive, yeah. If you're coming from Queensland up the Tablelands. Yeah, yeah, you'd, you'd turn off at Barclay Homestead. Yeah, you'd drive part, well, you drive through it, through the middle yeah, of the station okay. pretty much, but... Um, yeah, it's on the um, eastern side of the of the road um, where the actual uh, event is. Yeah. And um, yeah, great event. I went there. I think yeah, I think it was the yeah hundredth anniversary. I was there for, and it was mate unreal. Heap of people from Borrowdale went there. Yeah. Um, yeah, heap of school teachers and nurses and stuff. Actually, I went with um, uh, Tremaine. Oh wow! Yeah, back tre- in the train days. Yeah, yeah, Tremaine, the one that we uh, rescued from uh, from the island. Yeah, yeah. wow. So uh, yeah, he, him and his brother actually, I think. Yeah, his brother was there as well. So um, yeah, we drove down there, took a camper trailer. It was that windy that the camper trailer we couldn't get it to stay open. So <laughs> we're pretty much sleeping in the closed up camper tra- <laughs> camper trailer oh, right. on the ground. And um, yeah, mate, it was like the wind was incredible. Like just absolutely like. The car would be rocking all night, buddy, just from the wind, wind blowing past. Yeah. But um, so this isn't a rodeo. This is races. Yeah, I think they have a rodeo. Oh, usually. they do as well. I think it goes over four days. So I think they have yep. a rodeo on the first night, and yep. then um, yeah, they have all different all different events going yeah, on, okay. mate. And then the obviously the races. I you think, got the last you got day. bookies there. Um, yeah, I think they do. Yeah, I think they do have so a like local a, thing. Yeah, I wonder well, if don't quote a, me on that. Yeah. Um, yeah, if you want to check it out, it's um, ABC Amateur Race Club on Facebook and. Um, yeah, it's bloody. Yeah, it's a good show they put on. So we well, actually, will you be here then? Twenty to twenty third of July. Oh, plausible. It's between my birthday and Jazz's birthday, so I probably have to. It'd be Not nice here, if I was yeah. in Darwin for Jazz <laughs> from a wife for her birthday. I'll take it in the races, mate. <laughs> Nothing like a day at the races. I've got other news happening, which. I won't reveal on the podcast yet, which could be around that time. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Roger. Which you know about, yeah. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, well, anyway, so it's... No, yeah. Jazz isn't pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh. Uh, no. Uh, Mikey's got to go get a real job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, so uh, right. anyway, so if you're interested in that at all, check it out. I think you can buy tickets online. I think you have to buy tickets online yeah, before okay. it starts. So, so it's a pro- proper event. Like, yeah, 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 it's a yeah. big event, mate. Yeah. Like, like I said, when I was there for the 100th, I've been there since a couple of times as well, um, which wasn't as big but still a great event. Um, actually, I think the only time they haven't done it in the last 110, 115 years, whatever it is now, uh, was I think COVID times. Yeah, yeah. I think that's the only yep. time they missed out and doing it. So, yep. um, yeah. So, but yeah, it's a great event. So if you look, if you're on your way up here at all, and um, yeah, and you're going to be around that that uh, sort of Barkley area from between the 20th and 23rd of July, yeah, definitely check that out because um, yeah, it's a great great spot to go and have a look. So yeah, um, what else are we do? Another we'll, another fishing trip we did. We did a, um, we went for a bit of an explore and a drive out there to a little spot we know. Yeah, yeah. Did, did some fishing out there, land based, and uh, we had a bit a bit of a crew. Oh, um, yeah, we went uh, bullfrog. Yeah, uh, the girls, Kat and uh, Katrina and Kate came. Yep. Um, Shredder and yeah, Shredder, bullfrog. Bullfrog. You me? Yeah. yeah. It, was a, it was a good good one. I've actually got a little time lapse uh, video. I really want to show you, and it's it's crazy how. Um, <laughs> Everyone just swings into action. Um, so I hook up to a decent barra and then instantly, like Shredder, who is the only, only other one fishing at the time, he quickly gets his line in. You can see I think Ash goes for the net, Bullfrog goes for the second GoPro. Uh, the two girls go for their iPhone or iPhone and Samsung phone. And then, um, oh, Ant gets the music off. Uh, like every every single person just goes woof and swings into action and like and then suddenly this is the most videoed fish on the planet like we've got yeah three people holding cameras I've got my chest cam on yeah Ash is landing it for me and yeah it, yeah it was it's it was a good feeling well I think that was because you had got a fish earlier mate. here we go. <laughs> 
you had got a fish earlier and um, because people weren't moving at lightning speed, you were getting a bit frustrated and give everyone a bit of a blast. I did apologise. <laughs> I apologised. I did I, I, to reenact Can you stop it. your f- <laughs> you stop f- around. That's that's all I said. I, I think I even said please. I even said please. I think you said please about three times. Yeah, right? yeah. Getting quite anxious, which but you lost it anyway, so it didn't matter. Yeah, yeah. Bloody useless. Yeah. Anyway, that was a bit a bit bigger fish, but was still, we still landed a good one. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, by the by the time this podcast goes out, that around that time that I've made an episode, so that that one should be going live awesome. on my channel around then, so you get to see it. We cooked it up. Right there and then, Shredo did all the hard work. Really, bloody filled oh, with the as, fish as he does, lit, mate. Yeah, lit the fire. That's the only reason we invited him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's a he's a doer. Oh yeah, Shredder, that's he's, it, he's mate. A legend. Our mate Ivan. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, when you see a picture of him, you know why we call him <laughs> Ivan. So um, anyway, yeah, no, yeah, top bloke. But yeah. He, so uh, even though the weather's cooled down, there's still plenty, like we've just spoken about what Sanger's big barra. We we've been getting. Getting bar- well, like you that. dropped a good one there. I got one small one as well. Yeah, uh, only a rat. And then, and then yesterday then, with Andy, like dropped a really big one as well. So well, they are still feeding. But even when we were there, um, there's a fellow there on his quad bike with his young with his young bloke with yep. his young son. Yeah, and, you might um, even see him in the side of one of my drone shots. I think. Yeah, well, they um, yeah they went for a walk up the creek a bit and down the creek a bit, and then um, when we came back to the bar, which we'll get onto that in a minute too. Oh. Um, oh. It's um, only 10 a.m., mate. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, – but when we um, got back to the bar, I was talking to him and he asked how he went. And I said, oh, yeah, you got one good bar, dropped a good one, got one undersized. And um, he goes, yeah. He said, well, we ended up walking down and just found a bit of a snag and um, ended up pulling five bar off there. Yeah, wow. So, um, yeah, so, you know, there's plenty of fish around. So um, – and, they, you know, at the end of the day, they've got to eat. It's just a matter of – Getting them at the right time and yeah. everything to and maybe make it happen. yeah encouraging you might have to put the, the lure right in front of their nose sort of thing yeah I suppose that's something to probably mention especially when it's like this because it's not it's not that the water's cold it's the water has only just got cold so the water's dropped five six degrees over the last four or five days yeah so A sudden it, drop in temperature it, it, yeah that slows the fish down they will still eat but. You've got to like if you pull up to a snag you can't just cast one or two times you've got to cast you know, 50, 60, 100 times to entice the fish to come out and actually take your lure. Which so is literally what we did yesterday. Like, And we were like on top of the snag. The boat was literally like we we could have hit the snag with our fishing rods. Yeah. And that that's where Ash hooked up. Like, so the boat didn't scare him away. It's literally the barrel's hiding in the snag. Yeah, and we had like Andy on one side of the snag, yeah. us on the other side of the snag, three lures peppering yeah. that one small snag on yeah. the corner for 20 minutes, half an hour. Yeah. Um, before anything actually yep. happened, but yep. it just and goes to show. Two casts in a row for you. First one, boof, and second one, hook up. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, just you've just got to put in a little bit more effort when it's like this. You know, they're not, um, yeah, they're not just feeding flat out like, like other times, but um, which actually, I'll find you the video. You can put it up now. Did you see this video? I might have sent it to you on TikTok. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the uh, barrel boofing everywhere. Yeah, on, yeah. yeah. I, I don't yeah. know if we, can, if we can put it on overlaid or if it's oh, yeah, why copyrighted not? or whatever but i'll put a couple of seconds of it up yeah yeah but like yeah jesus i've, I've never seen anything like that like we've, yeah. we've been places wow. where barra have been buffing but that's that's next level yeah yeah now well, that's yeah like when i was a kid that's how i remember some places over near port keats when yeah, i was a kid okay. like you yeah literally just about walk across them like they're that <laughs> thick um definitely not like that here at the moment but um that at times though and some, some people will tell you, like the guys that come here a fair bit that um, that like fish in the dry season will tell you they get really good sessions because the barras school up when it's cool. And, yeah, they literally pull up on schools of 30, 40, 50 fish and they can just pull fish after fish out of a, out of a school. Yeah. And I suppose that's where, you know, your side scan and even now yeah. with your live scope and that comes into it. But, um, but yeah, interesting to note though that yeah, it doesn't have to be the build up or runoff. Everyone everyone talks about the runoff. We don't even really have a runoff here, so yeah. you know, um, yeah, that later in the year is good fishing, but it can be good fishing in the dry season as well. Yeah, so you, you just got to get out of the wind. Yeah, well, people catch barra here every day. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Not not us, but <laughs> <laughs> not us. <laughs> Sometimes. So what yeah. were you going to say about the bar? Oh yeah, so that was uh yeah, we had a great afternoon there um, at the bar. Yeah, well, at that, uh, that, that um, your oh, second yeah, then we spot. come back. Oh, then we yeah, came back, and then um, <laughs> on the road on the way back, um, yeah, you pulled up and you're like, oh, there's a look like a snake curled up on the road there. Yeah, like the size of a little donut. It was curled up, yeah. tiny. I don't even know how I saw it. Yeah, so um, yeah, which was cool. So we pulled up and had a look, and there's a little children's python, and um, so we thought, oh, well, we'll um, 
take it back and scare the backpackers. No, no, no. no we'll, <laughs> we did um, so. We'll, um, <laughs> there's some kids and that around. So, um, yeah, we um, came back up to the uh, up to the club and there was a heap of kids and stuff there. And we showed the showed some of the backpackers and that that had never never seen a snake or never seen one up, up close anyway. And um, yeah, let them um, have a hold of it and then uh, showed the kids and the kids ended up bloody. They wanted to take it home, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, you got a photo of it or crawl it across the kid's face, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah, so obviously only children's python was only you know four hundred mil long, but yeah. um, really really friendly once once he got calmed down yeah. a bit. So um, yeah, no, was, yeah, you pre chucked some photos up. Yeah, yeah. At the the so the the final shot in the the episode we did that afternoon, I, we do it back at the bar, and I'm holding the snake in my head. I don't even make reference to the fact that I'm holding the snake. So <laughs> if you weren't paying attention, you wouldn't even know I'm holding it. So any, yeah, any of you, if the video's already up and. Uh, you didn't notice it? Go back and have a look. I'm holding a holding a snake in my hand when I do the outro to that video. <laughs> <laughs> oh bloody hell! So, um, what's the plan for the next few days, mate? We got obviously we said Andy's here at the moment. He's just out the back there doing some editing. Yeah, he's, literally um, up in his in his penthouse there, and he's, he's staying in his rooftop. Up. Yeah, he's in there, buddy, editing away. He's such a prolific editor. Holy crap! He puts out some videos. He showed me his. Uh, his channel there, he's got like four videos lined up, which are all, all finished, scheduled, ready to go. By the end of today, he'll have probably another three. Yeah, yeah where well, me, I'm like, when I make videos, I'm I'm always chasing my tail, like make the video, edit, post, make video, edit, post. Yeah, but he's he's got get so much content. Well, well, I was there the other night. We were cooking up a feed at um, at home there with um, Ant and um, said, oh, we'll put something on the telly in the background anyway and ended up putting on a couple of Andy's videos. So for people that don't know, Andy Total Carnage uh, is his um, YouTube channel. Yep. So uh, is it, it's just Andy Total Carnage? Yep. Yep. Yeah, so um, – and we watched some of his recent stuff from down the Roper. Yeah. Like, yeah, how good was that? that oh, was, yeah. It was interesting seeing someone else, another YouTuber, on a crab, a commercial crab boat. Yeah. Like, I've, I've never seen anyone doing it. But, like, obviously that's a lot of my content is doing that. So just, I've spoke to Andy about it. I'm like – at first, I didn't know how to feel about it. I'm like, wait, you're, this is this is my thing, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he'd say he was up with these Roper boys, and um, it looks, it was actually interesting seeing how they operate up there. It's yeah, obviously v everything's very similar to what how you guys operate down here, but mm. also there's the little little subtleties of difference as well. Yeah, for sure. Which was yeah interesting to see. Um, yeah, obviously good looking. It looks like they're getting a few crabs up there for one. Yeah, yeah, yeah it looks like not not a bad season, but. Yeah. Um, yeah, it just shows it's completely different to to here though. Like you know, massive river. You know, yeah. two, two hours up the river to to load and unload, and yeah, then, wow. yeah no, we're we're pretty lucky. You know, Don pulls up with the boat ramp right here, and we're yeah, load out. <laughs> you know, fifty meters from the house, so <laughs> so it's pretty easy for us um, compared to that. But um, but yeah, no, they do it tough, so they deserve um, they deserve uh, to get a bit of a mention and yeah, get noticed and yeah. Yeah, they're living a, a pretty tough life out there. I yeah. mean, it's, you know, it's a lifestyle, you know, it's a, a lifestyle business, I'd say. You know, you've got to enjoy being on the water and enjoy doing it, but um, but it is tough work yeah. and it's, you know. And that, yeah. that Luke that he went out, out crabbing with looks like a bit of a legend as well. I think uh, we need to make sure that him and Mullet don't ever... Don't ever oh, <laughs> link God. up, I think. It'd, be, it'd start <laughs> to get a bit... <laughs> oh, bloody no. hell. Uh, it looked uh, looked good. Uh, Andy absolutely loved his trip up there. So, yeah, some yeah. big barrows getting caught there too. By the looks of it. Yeah. Well, he. I think he's yet in the next week. I think he's going to upload some videos. I think. Oh yeah. In fact, you're talking about the, the one that he's already released. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The fella, they had it in the boat there. They tried yeah. to swim it. It was a big barrow. Yeah. Yeah. Huge. Yeah. Huge monster. Yeah. So I think that was at um, maybe Tomato Island. Yeah. I don't know. I get all confused about that whole area there. There's the Roper Bar, but then there's Tomato Island and then you've got to travel here to there to there. I don't know. I've never been there. Yeah, yeah, Roger. Oh, well, yeah. that's, um, that's coming up. We'll, yeah. uh, we'll, we'll do a trip over there one day, mate. Yeah, we'll get there. So Maybe, even yeah. brunette races, like this year, if not this year, next year, like all these places, there's so many things we want to do. We've got to start a calendar, mate, and start putting some of these things in because, um, you know, we're pretty busy doing a lot of stuff. But yeah. um, we'll see. Hopefully I'll um, – yeah, hopefully uh, next year I'll be – a little bit more capable of getting away and doing a few things. So, yep. not that I haven't been, <laughs> been away much recently, but um, but yeah, we'll see what happens, mate. Um, yeah. So while Sandy's here, we might try and do a um, couple of overnighters or something, mate. We're yep. going to try and get out. Hopefully, the wind dies off enough that we can get outside because that's that's what I really want to do is is um, get Andy out to the islands yeah, and show him what it there. looks like. Um, you know, some of the coastline and um, 
you know, some of the reef fishing stuff because, I mean, Andy does a lot of um, barra content and stuff like that. But it would be nice to, um, yeah, to take him out and get him onto some nice, you know, coral trout and, and uh, goldies. goldies and, you know, maybe some redfish and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, Oh, then just, just show him how different it is from Darwin as well. Like you don't have to be in deep water, you know. We can yep. be in, you know, three, four metres of water and get big jewies and big goldies and, yep. you know, big coral trout and all that sort of stuff. So well, he loves his trolling as well. So you never know. You could troll up some Spanish and yeah, that's, tuna. Geez, they're good fun. They're good fun for good on camera as well because they 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 go. Go you, hard. You, you got, there's that the sound of the real, the, the drag screaming. That like every fisherman, it'll turn their head. If, if if one of my videos comes on and I've got th that sound on, any fisherman with that TV nearby, I'll be like, oh, what's that? You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, for sure. <laughs> so yeah, no, it'd be good to get out there and um, yeah, we might go and camp out in the boat somewhere, mate. Um, yeah, we'll take um, your boat, my boat, and Andy's boat, and yep. and um, yeah, go and take the swags and yeah, I've go got on. my big double swag as well, which is going to be a <laughs> oh, nightmare. But oh my god, it'll be all right. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's, he's a bit of a princess. He can't go anywhere without his queen size mattress and <laughs> <laughs> all the creature comforts. So uh, I'll probably take my hammock. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, you lived in your hammock for bloody six months or something. Like yeah, your whole yeah. first year crabbing. First year crabbing, yeah. mate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep, everything in the boat, mate. Sleeping in the boat, working, cleaning the boat, and then tying the hammock up and then <laughs> having a camp. Yeah, but no, it's, it's again, it's one of them things, mate. It's lifestyle, eh? Yeah. If you enjoy doing it, yeah. I was quickly look at my notes, mate, before we get onto the Royal Locker. Oh, yeah, we covered Sanger's fish. And yeah, cool. All right, well, let's move on to you, you've got a few notes there for the Rod Locker. So, um, have we seriously got no beers or what? <laughs> you thirsty? Oh, have we got, have we got some cold yeah, beers? Yeah. Oh, well, let's have a cold beer, mate. We're, if we're going to talk about the Rod Locker, we've got to, you know, it's like going to church, you know, you got to. Oh, he's even going to give me a stubby cooler. Maybe. Perfect. Oh, don't run. Mad mullet one. Mad mullet one. Yeah, if your missus won't let you buy the uh, 24 hour massage shirt, you might be able to get the stubby cooler. <laughs> <laughs> I have had the, that comment a few times of people that love the shirt, but they're like, oh, my missus won't let me buy it. One <laughs> fella says, oh, my missus won't let me buy that rub and tug shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Bloody hell. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, the rod locker. So, um, um, yeah, the page that Mikey set up for um, for the podcast the group, listeners, group. the group. Yeah, and um, uh, yeah, thanks for everyone that's um, signed up to that. Oh, over eight hundred. I'm getting like a hundred a day at the moment. Yeah, yeah it's it's, <laughs> it's going really good. So we only started what a week, two weeks ago. Yeah, something. and um, no, it's yeah, it's got quite a few people in there. Heaps of people posting um, photos and stories. stories and stuff like that. Yeah. So even um, of previous trips from. Five years ago. Well, 20 years ago. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, so if you've got any any questions and um, we're not quick enough getting back to you, but, he, um, yeah, you post your questions up in there because uh, there's a lot of people in there that know the area really well as well. So, um, yeah, everyone's posting their bloody – all their King Ash Bay related and, you know, local area content. So um, uh, this week I saw, uh, yeah, young Jason Barker, mate, 98 centimetre barra. Yeah, righty, eh? So, Caught uh, here. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's it looks like here in the background. I'm pretty sure. Well, it, actually, I'm pretty sure he says in there that it's um yeah biggest bar for King Ash Bay this week. So okay, I did see that one. Yeah. So um I yeah, took screenshots. Not nice fish. And if you yeah, if you want to join the rod locker there, I think there's only what three questions there. You got to. Is that the one? Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, yeah we'll chuck that photo up there so you King can Ash see Bay it, fish of the week. He called it. Yeah, yep. Yeah. yeah, nice, nice bar, mate. But he um. Yeah, and if you want to see that, uh, jump on the Facebook there and look up the Rod Locker. And um, I think we've only got like three questions or something to. Yeah, yeah. I just ask people, do you follow the podcast? Do you follow my videos? And then is it all right if you post something in, in the Rod Locker, can we use it on the podcast? Yeah. And like you don't have to answer yes to any of them, but like. If you answer no to all of them, you probably won't be. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If, yeah. And, and I have had a couple of people. I'm like, well, why are you even. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah, so if you're posting stuff in there, like we'll probably use it. So just yeah, yeah for, be forewarned. <laughs> um, uh, what else was in there, mate? Um, oh, we got a call out from uh, Skid Pig, mate. I yeah, don't mate. mind. Um, I've watched a few of um, Skid Pig's YouTube videos from yep. over North Queensland there. Yep. But he uh, quite enjoys some of his content. He does a bit of, bit of mud crabbing and fishing yep, and bit of everything. hunting and stuff over yep. there. So a little reef and that, yeah. So, yeah, so uh, Skid Pig, mate, when you come to King Ash Bay, we'll uh, look after you, mate. Just, yeah, mate. Uh, Shoot a sneak box, mate. Yeah. We'll I, I did reply to him saying he, you should you should get a, get a trip going here. 
But yeah, just like Andy come here, we, we were harassing him for a couple of months to get down here and now he's here. So, yeah, so we'll keep harassing you, mate. <laughs> <laughs> um, who else, mate? Bloody, oh, um, if you see uh, it, Brad or Nathan in there posting stuff, these are the guys from Jabbers. We talk about Jabbers in every podcast. They don't expect us to. They don't sponsor us. They have sent it to get full disclosure. They did send us uh, two rods each to use, which we absolutely love. If we if we didn't love them, we would, I think, well, we probably just wouldn't even mention them if we didn't like them. No, nah, they they're good gear, mate. That's, they're, that's they're, all I use now. I've literally done exactly what um, what Brad's done when when Brad showed me his kit when he was here last time. Yeah. Literally just a uh, Yeti uh, thirty loadout box. I've got both my rods, two reels, all my fish and tackle, everything in one small box. And, uh, you know, I've got several different boats that I'm often in, whether it be the punt, the polycraft, your boat, yep. you know, somebody else's boat, um, you know, whatever. And I can just literally just grab that box from, from anything and it's got everything in there I need. So, and that's the beauty of them five-piece rods is that they pack down so small. You yeah. can take two two rods, two reels, everything, and literally all in one little box. So it's exactly the same as what, um, what Brad showed me when he was here. But, yeah, th them guys have posted a few videos in there. I think... Um, uh, even some from um, uh, Rod and Rifle Tackle yeah, World Trent, in Catherine yeah. from Trent DeWitt there. So if you're interested in them rods at all, have a look on uh, in the Rod Locker and look, watch some of them videos. Watch what them, these boys are catching with these um, these travel rods. Like they're light as anything and pack away so small, yet they absolutely nail them. Big big redfish and yeah. And, and most of the of content stuff. they put most of the content they put up is from the Gulf here as yeah, well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's, so it's it is, from the islands. Yeah, so it's it's like it is local content and it's and it's good gear. Yeah, so that, that's awesome. Um, and if you want uh, fifty dollars off a rod, send us in a video, a and yarn, um, yeah. and if we uh, put it up, then uh, we'll send you a code so you can get fifty dollars off one of their um, one of the rods from their collection. John O'Hay, one day ago, I'm going to cut the first half out. Um, from the second half, cut a long story short, an amber fell out of the fire um, and almost set fire to the whole show. This is at King Ash Bay um, and near burnt King Ash Bay to the ground. I remember it cost me a fortune at the bar that night. The locals were, were handy at firefighting and even handier at drinking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't know if anyone that way remembers the day a bloke from Cloncurry near ended the whole show. So that was in 1998, apparently. So. <laughs> Before my time. Yeah. <laughs> that, don't worry, mate. That's happened a few times, actually. Yeah. Just, yet, just yesterday. yesterday. <laughs> just yesterday. Yeah. So yeah. Um, we were coming back up river and we could see big smoke on the horizon. We're like, oh, yeah, that's around Key Ash Bay. Yeah. And then as you get closer, we're, we're arguing over whether, no, that's over the back. No, that's over here. That's over there. And we got to the ramp and it's like, oh, no, that's here. <laughs> so, yeah, we had to bail and let Mikey. Uh, Put the boat on by himself. <laughs> Typical. <laughs> Every time. R run straight home, jump in the Toyota and went, went to have a look, check it out. That uh, Luckily, William and the boys had it all under control, mate. But, um, yeah, I was a bit nervous because with the big winds at the moment and everything's pretty dry, um, we haven't had the chance to really burn much off because it's just been flat out trying to get everything done. And then any time where it's been good to sort of do a bit of a controlled burn, it's um, everyone's sort of flat out. And then when everyone's got a bit of time, it's been too windy. So... Yeah, I was a bit, a little bit nervous when I saw the big black smoke, <laughs> plumes of black smoke coming through the camp yesterday as we got back. But it was right, I was on the other side of the road, and the boys had it well and truly thank, under control. So thank goodness, thank goodness. Yeah, we've got Scott Carmichael. Um, they're hitting the road for five weeks uh, on a fishing trip uh, at the start of August. They'll be hitting King Ash Bay at the second week, and then on a houseboat for a week. So I don't know if it's fishing here first and then going on the houseboat, but anyway, they'll be on a houseboat for a week. This, this was what reminded me of something I wanted to talk about, about like the perfect trip here. Mm. So if you're coming here, if you've got the time and the money, I would recommend. Was that from that way? I don't know. Should I go check on Normie? No. Come, it comes with the uh, microphone. Yeah. Anyway. Um, yeah, they're doing a trip, uh, the perfect trip here. Um, I would say... If you had the time and the money, you, you want to do the, the three major things, which would be come here, stay at the lodge, or if you've got your own camping set up or whatever, but come here, stay at the lodge for a week. So you get to get the full King Ash Bay experience and but, you know, meeting people at the bar and heading down the river each day. The next week, go on a houseboat, which gets you down the river and you get access, you're straight, like, so there's no traveling up and down the river. You, you have the houseboat right near one of your favourite fishing spots and you can go do little micro trips, do two-hour trip over here, come back, 
have a few beers on the boat, then go out for another little micro trip. Well, the best thing about that, if you got if you do get a houseboat too, is that um, especially if it's like early in the year or late in the year when it's hot, one you've got aircon accommodation, but oh, yeah. two you can go out early in the morning and and hit somewhere early in the morning for a few hours, come back, have a bit of a camp, have yep. a cook up, whatever, and then in the afternoon when it cools down again, you can go and have another another crack. Yeah, or something. yeah, yeah. Split shift, yeah. Morning quite, shift, afternoon shift. Quite often when it's hot like that, the middle of the day isn't isn't real flash anyway. So yeah, yeah, you know, you don't have to travel forty five minutes to the mouth and back. Yeah, um, you can sort of be right out there and get amongst it right out there. So yeah, but after you finish with the houseboat, I'll I'll then say third week weeby. Yeah, so then you've yeah. got a total. You might as well be a thousand kilometres from here, because out at the islands, like it's not the the muddy mangrove creeks like in here. Out there, we say it every podcast, but it's the wit Sundays of the Northern Territory. It's, yeah, it's just very picturesque, nice, but, clear, crystal clear blue water, yeah, and, especially if it's later in the year. Yeah, um, and it's calm, and, like, it's, and it's totally different fishing. Like you are going to go out and do some reef fishing, and you are going to be targeting, yeah, reef fish and pelagics and stuff like that, rather than. T- like in here, you you're mostly trying to catch barramundi, and and you can get barras and jacks around the rocks and stuff on, on most of the yeah. islands and that as well. So um, yeah, you know, you, and you don't need a um, if you make like weeby as a as a base uh, for a few days or whatever. You don't need to have a big boat. Like you don't have to have a six seven meter boat to get out yeah. there. Like if, if you've got a, a four and a half meter tinny, that's more than big enough to get out there on the right day. Obviously, if it's blowing thirty knots, it's going to be a rough trip, but. You know, if Brett can take your gear out there for you or whatever and, um, you know, you can just drive your boat out, you can take a – like I've taken a four-and-a-half-metre tinny out there or four, three, five out there, yep. you know, plenty of times. And, uh, you know, back in the day, um, you know, there wasn't any big boats here. Everyone used to fish it in tinnies. Yeah. You know, you just pick your days and you pick your, your weather and you pick your track and which way you're going to go. Yeah. And, you know, if it's not – like if it's not 30 knots of wind, you can get out there and – you know, you can go the back ways, it might be a little bit longer, but you can sort of stay in the lee of the islands most of the way to get out there. And then once you're there, it's in a sheltered bay. So if it's blowing a gale, you can stay in there and fish locally. Yep. And if you get a, a nice morning or a nice afternoon, you can shoot out wide or anything. You know, you yep. don't you don't need a big boat to get out there. So, yeah, just stress that. Yeah. Um, and the other thing is too, like if you want uh, somebody who mes- uh, in the rod locker asked about doing fishing charters. So yep. um, we still have, uh, there's one, I, I don't do them anymore, but um, there's still an operator here, Greg, um, from MacArthur River Charters. I think they're, I was talking to him on Tuesday night at the club. I think their landlines uh, got hit by lighting, so their landline's out. But um, yeah, if you get onto the uh, club website, I think he's got a mobile number there. Okay. Um, or if you get a message to the club, they can probably get it to Greg. And um, yeah, if you want to do a charter out wide, so um, he's got a, yeah, a nice big boat. So um, so he probably won't take one or two people out. He'll need a group. Nah, yeah, I think he needs like four or five people probably yep. to go out. But Make um, it but even if you are by yourself or just a couple or something like that, if you give him notice, he might be able to you know put you on with another group or yeah. something. So to make a boat up. So um, yep. Do you see that photo um, from? Uh, Oh, Barker, surname Barker. I don't know if that's his real name there, but the Crab- Crabber Shacks in 2006. Yeah, I did see that, mate. Yeah, it, it looks it, a bit different. It, no, well, I don't know about that. It <laughs> might as well be a photo from right now, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, well, Nothing, true. Nothing's changed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I suppose every wet season they get um, they get knocked around yeah. and they, and get repaired and all that. Yeah. Yeah, well, so, uh, so if you watch uh, Andy's videos from the Roper where he's down there with um, with Luke... Like you'll see, Luke's got a really nice setup there. Yeah. You know, pretty much a house on the Looks river like with a house. floating pontoon and and stuff. And here it's a little bit different. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, yeah, yeah, uh, stick huts in the mangroves yeah. like you'd find in uh, you know Vietnam or somewhere. You know, yeah. <laughs> so I'll keep going through these. These yep. are, these are good to talk about. Yeah. Um, I got a screenshot of this one. Gavin Robert Hay, uh, the family and I are coming up in July for three weeks. Just wondering. Oh, that was the fishing charters one. Sorry, you you literally just covered that. Um, yeah, wondering if there's any fishing charters operating. So yeah, yes, Ash just spoke about it. Sorry. <laughs> um, there's a fellow named Jason George that did a time lapse video um, of literally from launching and then all the way down the river. And I'm like, oh, I haven't done that a time lapse like that in so long. I literally commented on his video saying, mate. Like I'm literally going to copy that. I haven't done it in ages. If you see a video of me in one of my videos doing that in the next month or so, it's like full credit goes to you because <laughs> there's, uh, that that's the reason you've you've got me back into it. I love good time lapse, mate. Yeah. I've even done a couple, mate, going and heading yeah. out early in the morning and then uh, heading back with the storm. Storms one, and you put uh, that was on TikTok, and mm. you put a good. Um, oh, 
not Jason Aldean or um, oh, the song in the background. Oh, it would have been um, Ride the Lightning, I reckon. Ride the Lightning, been. yeah, yeah. Who's that by? Oh, next question. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this fella is from, oh, I didn't, I screenshot it, but I didn't put his name in it, unfortunately. But um, hey, this is from Queensland. And here comes the ride on lawnmower. Perfect. <laughs> we, we, we might have to pause. <laughs> oh no, we'll just we'll just wing it, eh? We'll just keep going. He'll 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 only pass one once or twice through there. Perfect. Um, hey fellas, was running pots today, and one of the pro potters came up to me for a yarn because he saw me wearing the green golf mud crabbers footy shorts and the Goldies before Coldy shirt. Um, he says he watched and listened to every episode, same as me. Keep up the work, good work, fellas. Tom from the Gold Coast. From the Gold Coast. Yeah. So oh a, wow. A, so a mud crabber from the Gold Coast literally came up and said, <laughs> recognised the clothes he was wearing and had a yarn about about our, like my videos and our stuff. So I'm like, oh, that's that's where we're getting. Well, there. if you're the pro crabber from the Gold Coast, reach out, mate. Send us a message. Yeah. Send us a message, and if we're just down at the Gold Coast, mate. Send us a message, and uh, if we're down there, we'll um, we'll catch up, say good day. Yeah. It'd be nice to uh, see how other people do it. Oh, for sure. Yeah, all right. Well, I think we've well and truly peppered the rod locker today. Um, what do we usually do now? Um, song nominations? Songs, mate. Yep. So uh, the guys in the golf, no, it's not. It's the Golf Mud Crabbers playlist on Spotify where we add songs to it each week. And we now have one of the best playlists imaginable, in our opinion. Um, I've got three this week. Where would you? I, I, already, I already know what you're going to nominate. I already know what you're <laughs> going to nominate, but you go, you tell everyone. It's, hey, a, good, it's a good one. Oh, yeah, for sure, mate. You can't, you can't go past a bit of Luke Combs, and Luke yeah. Combs just dropped his new song, mate. Ain't No Love in Oklahoma. It's, uh, I think it's the uh, the soundtrack to uh, the new Twisters movie that's coming out. Yeah. So I don't know if you, anyone knows Twisters, the movie, uh, the original one. Like, that was one of my favourite movies as yeah. a kid. Yeah, Helen Hunt? I think, yeah, I think yeah. it might be, yeah. Yeah. I think so too. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, Luke Combs' new song, mate, is uh, unreal, and it's a uh, a little bit more of a rock sort of a song, I suppose. Yeah. Than, uh, well, you apply it. So it came out yesterday, and Ash, when I we were about to launch the punt yesterday, and Ash had it on in his car, um, and he, he said, "Oh, look, 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 new Luke Combs," and I'm like, "Oh, yeah, right, yeah." And I came on, and I'm like, "Oh, that's a bit angry." Like, yeah, <laughs> like it's, it's a bit more, a bit more, yeah, rock aggression. <laughs> I don't know. It's good. I like it. Um, I've got three. We'll just go through them fairly quickly. Um, we don't have any red hot chili peppers on the list yet, and that's that back in like the nineties, two thousands. That was they were right up there. Like I'm a massive fan of chili peppers. Um, yeah, John Frusciante is one of my favourite guitarists. I didn't mind when they had Dave Navarro was on a guitarist back in the uh, One Hot Minute album. You know, yeah, awesome band. Uh, Scar Tissue. It's got like two or three guitar solos in it. It takes you on a bit of a journey. It's awesome fun to play on drums. I was in a little band once and we uh, used to play Scar Tissue. Um, yes, yeah, so that's an awesome song. Two more, uh, Withdrawals by Tyler Farr. Yep. Um, I couldn't even tell you another Tyler Farr song. I don't know him, but this song, I, I, I absolutely, the his vocals, are, I love the sound of his voice. Um, it also tells a bit of a story sort of as well. Like I think it's about sort of addiction and stuff like that. So yeah, hence yeah. Withdrawals. Um, and then the other one, Reload, which is Colt Ford and Taylor Ray Holbrook. I assume it's Taylor Ray Holbrook that sings in the chorus, because uh, you'll know Colt Ford's voice from the verse. Yeah. But um, that it's just a super cool song. I reckon that's. Uh, I'm, I'm surprised I hadn't already uh, nominated that song a long time ago. So there's there's three from me. Three from you. Well, let me bloody do another one then. Seems All you right. get. Seems you get three. <laughs> no, only because I just thought of it. There's. Um, uh, and again, I saw her when I was in Nashville, and she just won um, Entertainer of the Year. Um, just I think just before I was there, or just after I was there, it was like Lainey Wilson. Oh yes, I know why. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I sent you. A, yeah. Did you already know? Or did and then uh, yeah, well, you said it. the only thing was they got the Red Devil to bloody. To, oh, uh, Reva. <laughs> yeah, Reva. Yeah, yeah. After the old anthem bloody thing, you've yeah. burned all the CDs. Yeah, and... yeah, 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 yeah. Bloody Reva. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, she was just um, uh, what, what do you call it? Uh, accepted into the, uh, the the Grand Ole Opry. Yeah, um, which so is a huge deal I'm, for a country artist. It's just the yeah. highest honour you can yeah, have as a country now, artist. Now become a member. Yeah, yeah. Of the Grand Ole Opry. Yeah. So um, I love watching that. I watched it so many times. The Luke Combs video when they announced that he's, he's, he's in, yeah, yeah he just loses his shit. Yeah, it's so well she just dropped a brand new song as well, mate. Um, 
which is called Hang Tight Honey. And, um, yeah, she played it at the, I think it was the CMAs a couple of days ago. And, yeah, just she's absolutely on fire at the moment, mate. Yeah, like we love just, Oni. She's absolutely on fire. So um, so there you go. I've got two as well. All right. Perfect. So the uh, it's good to know that around King Ash Bay, all, when you get here, all the grass will be mowed. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. As evidenced by the uh, the back backing noise we've got. Yeah. Um, at least, oh, look, at least we got we got to the end before it started. <laughs> um, oh, what about? Uh, oh, we're going to play that video as well. Oh yes, okay. So we mentioned jabbers before. Like if you've been watching the podcast regularly, you know we've been begging people to send in yarns, video yarns. Um, and if you do, um, we'll give you a fifty dollar voucher to fifty dollars off your jabbers rod. Go on their website. We'll give you a code. You can order yourself a jabbers rod. Um, yeah, so we, we did, have a, did have a fella, and we're going to cut to that clip right now. Yeah, g'day, Mikey and Ash. It's uh, Daryl from Townsville. Just sort of give you a, a funny story about an incident that happened to us when we were up fishing in King Ash Bay in 2021. There's three boats, um, six fishermen, um, two in each boat. So we've all gone out, and we were you know, launching the boat ramp, and, um, get, so, and then we waited for someone so we could fly them past the rock bars and get that track on our GPS. Um, so off we go. And we make Tez, he was in a new boat that he just towed up there for this trip and he had two new sounders in it. But he hadn't had any chance to set them up, which was quite funny. That's the whole point of this story. And um, so that after the day's fishing, you know, we're, we're luring away down to MacArthur, get back to camp, you know, late in the afternoon, have a few quiet beers, get a fly going, start and get the tea ready, waiting for Terry and Pat to come back. And we're waiting and waiting, and all you know, next minute it's dark, and we're going, What are we going to do here? You know, we'll wait a bit longer because you probably shouldn't go out and look for them because they're probably just stuck on a mud butt. Yeah, and just after dark, uh, we finally hear a boat pull up down below us here at Jenny Flats. What happened? We said, Well, let us crack a beer and we'll tell you the story. So they're coming back and you know, trying to follow their line on the GPS, but they didn't realize that. The actual setting on their on their GPS was actually set to north up, not heading up. So as they're coming back past the rock bars, it's upside down, and they're on the wrong side of their track. Next minute, they launch the boat up onto the rock bar on a, onto some reeds and come to a stop really, really quickly. And they actually managed, with a bit of struggle and effort, to push the boat back in because of all the green reeds were a bit slippery and made it easier for them to get it in. It was a big effort, they said, though. So they got back and then, you know, a bit of blood off them here and there, a bit of bark. I'll tell them, Mikey can probably tell a little bit of a story about what that's like, stopping as quickly as that. Surprisingly, there was no, absolutely no damage to the boat, which was good because it was a three-week fishing trip and that was their first day. And the next morning, Cameron, he's a bit of a low-rance expert, he jumped in Terry's boat for it and he changed the settings to Heady Up on his GPS. So it was actually... Uh, a lot easier for Terry to follow on the next few days. Um, yeah, so that was a bit of a funny story. The, uh, the only other thing, other thing that Terry's running into up there is he's been back since since 2021 and he did ran, run into something at the bar. So I'll show you a little bit of video of that. He wasn't happy that I couldn't make it up that trip, so he sent me a funny video. So I'm going to get him back now with a copy of this video. But all the best, Ash and um, Mikey. What you guys are doing is great. Loving Absolutely loving the videos. Cheers, mate. Bye. Yeah, good day, Gamo. Oh, okay. s- sorry, yeah, s- it. sorry, it looks like a potato. We're a bit blurry, but look, <laughs> old mate's bloody. Uh, he, yeah, his <laughs> camera is a bit as, as clean as his beard. So, uh, look, it's, yeah, we wish you were here. We're having a good time here. We're about to run the Cane, to- Cane Toad Calcutta. We yeah. haven't got a ticket in. Oh, no, nah, mate. You, <laughs> nah, you, you'll buy one. We'll go, on the, we'll go on the syndicate. We'll share the prize money. How's that sound? <laughs> yeah, Perfect. Good. All right, well, buddy, we wish you were here, mate. You're a champion. Yeah, first time, first fish to have been away, but he's not here. Oh, shit. Like and subscribe. Buy the merch. <laughs> All right, so that uh, that clip there was from Daryl Gammon, if that is your real name. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that's that's good. So that that video was uh, he actually sent through was uh, yeah five minutes long. I did edit it down a little bit, um, but yeah, that that that's awesome. Yeah, definitely uh, definitely make sure you have your sounder sorted. 
<laughs> uh, and, uh, don't end up on the rocks there. <laughs> well, that, that reminds me of uh, when uh, we had Trent on, they talked about the, the transducer playing up and they were, had to swim a couple of times to try and fix it and work out what was going on and you know, thought she was all buggered. And <laughs> then I need to work out it was just zoomed in too much. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Whoops. Yeah, and obviously um, a lovely little uh, – I don't even remember videoing that that thing it was clip from the bar yeah yeah i do not remember that at all and there's a lot of things i don't remember from the bar <laughs> mate yeah but anyway that's the sort of thing i do though if someone comes up to me and speaks to me oh what my mate a mate of mine's your biggest fan i'm like all right what's his name give me your phone and <laughs> all right you know mate down here wish you could be here <laughs> <laughs> yeah anyway well, all right good, mate i reckon and we got through it all yeah mate i reckon um i reckon we might shut it down and then we'll go see that fella from um reef city signs over in the lodge yep yep too we'll, easy we'll go say good to him too easy mate right all right I'll shut, shut it down, down russ oh look at that <laughs> guys in the gulf <laughs>